Oh, yes. Welcome into Snow the Goalie, the only Flyers podcast, the people's podcast, players podcast, prognosticators podcast, PD Light podcast, the only Flyers podcast. And if you're watching and you're wondering, where are the other guys at? Why is it just Russ, the weakest of the three? Well, in honor of John Tortorella's decision in overtime last night, I decided I'm not going to put the two best guys on the roster, out on the ice, or to start the podcast. Let's start with the weak link. And by the way, I'm hobbled. I twisted my ankle coming down the stairs. I'm on a long shift. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to do the right thing. And let's bring on the guys that you're here to really hear from. And that, of course, is Anthony Sanfilippo on Twitter, at Philly, Bundy on Twitter, at Cetarian6. Gentlemen, I'm going to put this thing back together. It's great to see you. How are you guys doing this morning? Couldn't be better, Russell. Bundissimo, how are you? Um, good. <laughs> how, are, how are you? <laughs> how was your morning so far, Russ? It's been a morning. Yeah. Sp- Spring sure break. Has. Spring break here. <laughs> Not for my wife. She's still at work. Ah. It's great. Yeah. 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 So, anyway. So, so, so we, we got the, what did you put on for the kids? On the TV to get them to be nice and quiet for you, so that you can do this this morning. I don't know. The oldest is in charge of the remote right now. Oh boy. So hopefully it's you know. Usually he likes to watch Dude Perfect. We do a, a mix of Dude Perfect and How Ridiculous in this house. Okay. So in how other words, is great. In, in other words, what, in other words, what you're telling us is that the odds of you getting up and walking off the show at some point to go handle something in the other room are pretty solid. No, they're low. They're very low. Oh, okay. There's not a lot of screen time in this house, so when there is screen time, they're kind of like mosquitoes flying towards that (laughs) bright light. Eventually, they'll get zapped, but for a while, they're just going to be focused in on it. The baby's at daycare. uh, Where's the baby? Who's watching the baby? Baby's at daycare. We're still good there. I don't have the baby. You don't want the real David Berkowitz watching the baby. So, so you really only have the two of them at home right now, right? Because your one son is hanging out with your with uh, his grandparents, right? That's correct. Okay. Okay. So, so it's we're not okay. Too we're bad. good. All right. Okay, no, good. it's not that bad. It's not that bad this morning. Yeah. All right. That's good. But um, guys, I think that today was a a good time for us to do this show, and we talked about it. And we have a bunch of other things that are kind of in the works right now. I think today could be like one of those somewhat big days in the uh, world of Snow the Goalie. And you know, <laughs> Berkowitz, uh, Berkowitz but, got the line. I'm glad he said you heard that. You didn't get oh, it, okay. Russ. You didn't, he got it. He says, "Yeah, you don't want him babysitting your kid." <laughs> he goes, "I was born in 1980." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I don't get it. I love um, it. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. But no, Ant, I think, I think uh, you know, we, we hinted at this last summer at one point. We were like, oh, it could be a big day in the history of Snow the Goalie. I think that we're, we're not on the precipice of something quite like that again. Uh, but I do think that today is a big day. We have a few things, a couple irons in the, uh, in the fire. So hopefully we'll be able to tell some people about some things soon. But we are working on a few things, uh, and we'll see how it goes. But Guys, I think today was a good day to do the show because the gauntlet is finally over. The seven-game gauntlet is done. It's something that we talked about a lot. I mean, obviously, there are some things that we come back to time and time again, and this was certainly one of them, and a big reason for it is we kind of viewed it as this was the season. The seven-game stretch that they were entering in mid-March was going to potentially make or break their chance of making the playoffs. And before I kind of get your thoughts and your feelings on the Rangers game and everything, I want to throw it back to March 14th, because on March 14th, uh, we had Jackie Spiegel on pregame. Ant made a little bit of a prediction, said if the Flyers win this many games, good chance to make the playoffs. And then Bundy, I think it was during the first intermission, you came on the show, having not heard Ant, and you also made a prediction. And then we actually got into how we thought it would play out. So I, I want to throw it to this, because this, I think, gives you an idea of why so many people trust the fine folks at Snow the Goalie. So let's throw to this really quick. Here we go. I think six points in the, in the seven games, and you're in the playoffs. If you could get six points in these next seven games, you're very likely still in that playoff spot. And so then, therefore, the rest of the season... If you basically play 500, you're going to make the playoffs. Yeah. Players get six points. All right, six points out of the seven games. 
they will make the playoffs. That's, that's, that's what you. That's, that's what exactly I said, what he I said, said that pre-game. Pre-game. Did you? I never. Yeah. I, that's exactly I what I thought that, coming yeah. in. That's what I said that. Six pre-game. points out on that out of seven and yeah. out of the seven games, and you're in the playoffs. And they're in the playoffs. I Where are the six points though? Because like I could see. Oh, that's the I, that's the question. Well, I, well I, look at it because. Oh, I said I, that. I felt I think, like they could split these two games with Toronto. I agree. I don't think it'll happen tonight. I think that next week's yeah. game against Toronto, you can at least get a point. They've been good against Carolina all year. They've been good against Florida all year. All right. So say a point there and a point there, so that gets you to three points. Feel like. Florida, though, I mean, are you really gonna f- sweep Florida? Like, no. they're gonna, they'll be better here in Philly than they probably were in Florida. Yeah. I could see them going a point, maybe two against Toronto next week, one against Carolina, one against Florida. Well, you have them losing all those games, and I'm trying to say to you, you're asking me where they can get wins, and I'm telling you, I think they can get wins. And look, Boston has not played well lately. No, they have not. They've not, and so like, can they split with Boston? I think it's possible. I'm not predicting yes they're going to. I take it game by game on the prediction thing. Yeah. Right? But I but I think that there is a possibility because of the way Boston's playing that they can steal one of those games. Well, hot damn, gentlemen. Hot damn. We go back over the seven game stretch and how did it play out? The Flyers picked up a win against Toronto at home. They picked up a point in overtime against Carolina. They picked up a win against the Bruins. They got nothing against the Panthers. And then they picked up a win against the Rangers. No, oh, a point against the Rangers. What did I say? I said a win, win. didn't I? A, yeah, point. a point. A point against the Rangers. And that landed on six, six points. points in seven games. Yeah. Why would you listen anywhere else? I mean, um, we, we told people almost two weeks ago how this was going to play out. You don't even have to watch the games. That's what we're here for. We watch the games so you don't have to. Snow the goalie. It's a new uh, shirt over at shop.snowthegoalie.com. <laughs> um... Yeah, and the thing of it is, is that when you look at it, I mean, yes, they are still in a playoff spot, as as I think I said. But you know, to be fair to the teams chasing them, Washington has probably been a little bit better than I thought they would be at this point. Um, so they're they're within a point of the Flyers. But the good thing is, is the Flyers have now a three point cushion on Detroit. And when you look at it, you know, th- making up three points with nine games to play is a tough thing to do. I think Detroit has one extra, right? They have 10 left. But even still, that's that's a tough thing to do. So to me, when you look at what, the, what they have left, you know, the Flyers have an easier schedule than both Detroit and Washington. It's not a completely easy schedule. Um, but there are some games in there that the Flyers should get wins that they're going to chip away at, at what they need. And, and I look at it and I say, you know, again, play 500. You get nine points in the last nine games, you're in the playoffs. Um, and I think that they'll do that. I mean, when you look at some of the teams that they're going to play here in the final three weeks of the season, that they're going to get those nine points. If they don't, that's on them, and they blew it, right? And they, mm-hmm. at that point, you could sit there and say they blew the playoff spot. They choked it away, okay, at the end of the season. Um, but the, the Flyers' schedule is far easier than either Washington or Detroit has the rest of the way, and if the Flyers just play 500 hockey, which they've done all season long as they have played 71 games and have 35 wins, technically one game under 500 winning percentage. It's above 500 points percentage thanks to the loser point. Um, but if they do 500 hockey, they're, they're in the playoffs, and I don't even think it's a question. I agree. Well, Wendy, I said, how are you feeling? Good, good. I mean, it was um, it was a really entertaining game last night. Very much so. Um, yeah, I, I it's super entertaining game, especially the third period. I thought um, I thought some guys played well. Um, it was it was a great point because again they didn't they didn't quit. Um, I'm trying to think of things that jumped out at me. Uh, that was shit Sturkin last night, not Shisterkin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure, no, just... on shop. the goalie. dot com. Shit Sturkin. I um I'm just being honest. That's as bad as you're ever going to see that guy, ever, 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 ever. And uh, you know, again, and I'm always a little bit like honest where the goals came from. Like a lot of them were Flyers got ended up with those long cheater plays. Um, it it was it they they didn't give up, but both goalies last night were awful. I mean, they were not good. So I always consider everything in a win. And is it a real true – like, did you really truly get go in there and, and you played well, but you didn't see the best of the Rangers last night at all? I don't think you did. But you pl- the Flyers played well. Uh, the story of the night last night was the over- start of the overtime. Um, that's one where, you know, you're going to have somebody on the other side of the equation trying to spin it. There's no spinning that. That's just a coach trying to – 
do too much. He's overthinking it, and if it works, he looks like a genius. And if he doesn't like it did, if you put two defensive forwards on the ice and they're out there to protect, you know, the the defensive side of it and they get scored on 30 seconds in, there's no point. The way that the way those guys were playing last night, like connecting those guys, put them out there. At that point, who cares about the the loss of the I mean, you're better you're gonna get a better chance getting two points than you were just sticking with one. That was all that stuck out to me last night. Um, I, I just, again, that's not, that's, I, I, I don't know. I'm going to put Frost and tip it out or some combination of those four, Forster, Konechny, Frost and tip it with Sanheim, I guess, you know, to start and then York next. But I, I yeah, I think Bundy, I, I think his philosophy here, and it's not worked the last couple of times, but I think his philosophy here is, you you are trying to take advantage of matchups for lack of a better term and so you also don't want especially on the road because that's where it seems to get them you don't want the other team to have the better matchup against you and so what he's trying to do is play it defensive first because if in other words if you put your best offensive players out there maybe the rangers Put a more physical, you know, a more physical two-way, you know, for- forwards and defensemen out there to try and take you off the puck. Because Flyers are not great puck possession guys. They're good, but they're not the greatest puck possession guys. And so maybe the thought process is let's let them put their better players out up front, and then we can take advantage. If we could, we could survive that first shift, then we can take advantage of it moving forward. I don't necessarily agree with it. Okay, I think that you're right. You got to put your best players out there, no, it's, yeah, yeah, and try and try and score. I'm just trying to justify, you know, what or his thinking. I'm trying to figure out what his thinking is and, and try and explain it. So, you know, how I, many teams do that though, Ant? Like realistically, I, it's I mean, it's not like say. I expect you to crunch all the numbers here, but like, it feels like for the most part, teams typically do put out their best poten- potential offensive well, lineup I'm, to start OT. You try to get possession. If it works, great. If it doesn't, all right. Like, hopefully those guys don't totally suck defensively. You can get the puck back, and and then you try to get something going. Like, we always made the joke that – you remember a couple of years ago, Ant? We'd sit up in press row, and we'd say, like, this is turning into lacrosse, where yeah. it's just like you are you get possession, and you can realistically, you know, wear down two and a half minutes without even blinking as long as you can maintain possession. It – yeah, I, I guess that there's something to be said for playing the defensive lineup to start, but like, once again, you you failed at getting possession back, and so then you had no real opportunity to possess the puck and do anything of value with it. And it did feel like they fought their way back into it. You maybe make the case that they had some momentum going into overtime. It feels like they left a point out there. Like Scott Lawton even said after the game that yeah. there there are no moral victories and it feels like they let a point get away. I, I think it's hard to sell to these guys down the stretch that like this is the most advantageous thing to do in OT. Well, I think that I think that they let the point get away in regulation more so than they let it get away in overtime. I mean, it, you know, the other the thing that I was more scratching my head about was Ryan Paling seemed to get hurt at the end of the third period. Mm-hmm. Look at his Bundy. Looked like he was holding his arm like really close to his body, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not mistaken on this. And then they started the overtime with him, and even in the overtime, it looked like he was favoring it somewhat. And so, like, I, that's where I'm like, well, if the guy's banged up there, why go to him to start the overtime? Because then you're really playing it less than full strength, even with the three guys that you have on the ice. So, like, that to me was the thing that, that I think that they missed, and I think that that's where the, the criticism can come in um, more than, you know, oh, well, you should have started these three guys or whatever. Because guess what? I mean, the same thing could have happened. If you lose that face-off, with the, no matter who was on that ice, you lose that face-off, the Rangers could probably score against your other players too. It doesn't matter. It's the possession is the most important thing. But it, but it, well, the, but it didn't happen. So right. that's what I'm saying. So right. I mean, yeah. so again, so if you're gonna, but what I'm saying is, if you get possession, and I know you're saying the Flyers aren't great puck possession guys, but I'm just saying last night in a game like that, like, what's the point? There's no point putting Cates and Paling out. If you're yeah. gonna go for it, 
just fucking go for it. Don't wait around and have two guys come out that you're not really even sure that it, it's going to, like, you're out there for defense. You can't have a defensive presence on a three-on-three. I'm sorry, you just can't. There's too much space on the ice. So putting guys out there that either are good defensive players, but again, a defensive concept is built on five-on-five five in situations like that. Those guys aren't, like, Paling's got 10 goals. I don't know, Kate's got, what, four, maybe three, I don't know, whatever. I don't understand the process. Yeah, it, you have to, and again, if you're looking through the game, like, what are you looking at? Like, you had, you, did you see who was going last night? Like, Paling was going to get a power play goal, but he wasn't the guy driving the offense. Like, no. and, and again, like, I would have rather seen Couturier on the. <laughs> had to get that in there somewhere, guys. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, no, I, I did. I, yeah, I forgot we had a live show, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I, again, that's overthinking it. And, 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 and there's no need for it. Just put yeah, your I, fucking best offensive players on the ice at the end of the game and go after it. I, I think he yeah, overthought you know, it. Shoot I think he overthought it too. I really do. Like, like if you ask me, and who are your first three guys going on the ice? It's not the three he put out there. I mean, it's well, certainly are you not. Gonna, so let me ask you: Are you going to take Cates and Paling and put them in the shootout after? No, I because know. that's the skills contest. And if you're saying the three on three is not a skills contest, of course it is. So I'm just making a point. If you weren't going to put yeah. those two guys in the shootout, they shouldn't be starting three on three. I like the, de- you know, and then you get the coach who, um, well, it wasn't the coach; it was the assistant coach that got shoveled out and said, or you know, about the, the guy being a, um, a good, um, you know, Paling's been one of their best two way forwards all year. He he's been very good, really good. He's a good skater. He's a big body. He's, yeah, it would Better not have expected, been my probably. start last night in overtime. Like, I wouldn't have started those two guys. No, I wouldn't either. And, and I'll be honest, if if Paling was healthy, like if the, he didn't look – I mean, again, we could all see that there's something wrong there, right? I mean, we, you know, with, with him physically. If he's not hurt, I'm okay with putting one of those guys out there and putting maybe an offensive player, another one of the offensive players. I could, pro- I could probably go, okay, you want to go Paling and and – you know, connect me or paling and tip it. Fine. All right, fine. I'm okay with that because you. I understand the need for wanting somebody who's a two way forward. I would still rather go Couturier, but I get it. I I get it if you think Coots is a little bit toast at this point physically. But I don't understand putting a banged up paling and no gates out there. That is where I think it 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 was o- definitely overthinking it and made the biggest mistake there. Um, Again, if you don't lose, if you lose possession on that opening off the face off, I'm not certain it matters who the players are that are on the ice because the Rangers probably going to score that goal no matter what. But the the reality of it is is that your best chance of of scoring a goal, you're right, is this is a skills competition three on three. You want your most skilled players, yeah, or your yeah. best, yeah, or your best skating guy. Kate Kate's is is a nice player. They spent last year really propping him up on a pedestal all year. He was like last year's Tyson Forster, right? When you go back, mm-hmm. I mean, ever they really pushed the agenda. I he he makes good defensive positioning plays, but there's got to be more there. There yeah. has to be more there because they gave him a pretty good contract. Like they paid him pretty good money for a second bridge contract. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure what he does except be in good position sometimes. Seriously. Yeah. Like somebody said to me once going back to your day, who does I asked who would he most remind you of? Someone said Jody Hall. That's not an insult. Jody Hall was really good at what he did, but he that's what he was. He was a penalty killer. He was a depth forward. Um, I don't know. I, I, am I missing something here, Ant? Like, am I? Is there something in Noah Cates and and Paling is what he is. I like Paling and I like Cates, but they are what they are. Paling's had a good year. He's he's ref, uh, found himself after a few stops elsewhere where people didn't find any value in him. They resurrected him here. Um, he's played well. He's responded. He's a good player. He should be Lot Lawton's replacement, and and he most likely will be if they ever decide that 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 ship has sailed. But. You know, again, it's – it's. I don't know where that was. And if I'm missing something here, let us know. But I just don't – I don't see with the lineup you had how Noah Cates is, is starts that three-on-three is, is makes zero sense to me. 
Yeah, well, it would have been, it been nice to hear the rationale for why they opted to go that way. I know that Brad Shaw kind of explained his interpretation of the reasoning, but it would have been nice for the coach to come out and talk. And again, we come back to the same thing. And so the idiot, smooth-brained, you know, koala-brained detractors of this show will say, well, you, you have an extra grind with torts. And I'm going to say once again, imagine if Nick Sirianni made a stupid, stupid call in overtime of a game that has playoff implications for the Eagles and then no-showed the press conference and sent out his assistant coach. Imagine if Nick Nurse puts together an out-of-bounds play that results in no shot being taken in an overtime with playoff implications for the Sixers. Imagine Rob Thompson makes a disastrous call with the bullpen with a playoff berth on the line, and he opts not to show up, and he put, he sends out the pitching coach instead. There is a certain level of responsibility and accountability that you have as a coach. It is part of your job. And while there are the the odd, and we talked about this the other night at Press Row Show, while there are some people who have just like taken a blind loyalism where the coach is infallible, makes no mistakes, and like, oh, you guys just care because it, it affects your stories. I'm going to write in a story. I don't give a fuck. All right? But I do care that a coach who preaches accountability comes out and talks to the media, especially after he makes a pretty critical mistake for a second time, and he no-shows. I don't know what the reason was. I don't think we'll get a reason. I, I genuinely feel that there are times where he's just kind of over it and has no desire to go out and answer. And, like, the flip side is if the the detractors who are like, oh, he doesn't answer your questions, you guys are really upset about it. Brad Shaw gives much more thoughtful responses because he actually stands there for more than 45 seconds. So for a writer, Brad Shaw is giving you far more to work with. I'm just Mr. Like, hey, if we're going to preach accountability and culture, it probably is a shitty look for the coach once again following a loss to no-show. It's let not me, okay. Let me throw something at you. Go ahead. Please do. When he first no-showed in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. where was that game played? Or who did they play? Do you remember? I don't it was know. last year. Do you remember who they played that year? That game? Was it, it, was, it was St. Louis. No. Columbus. Was it one of his former teams? It was Columbus. Like Columbus? Okay. okay, it was in Columbus. That's oh, when the, right, yes. That's when the, yes. Grievance, the grievance was filed against him, and he got mad at Sam and everything else, right? Remember that? Okay, so it was Columbus. Uh, earlier this year, he gets tossed in a From game. Tampa. I and didn't come out team. and talk. Who was mm -hmm. that against? Tampa. Last night, he loses a game to the Rangers in New York. Who did he not come out and talk against? The Rangers. The Rangers, who he coached previously. Just saying. Yeah, but what was the Rocky Thompson game at home? That was Saint, that was St. Louis was, last that was, year. That, that was that was St. Louis, yeah. And Bradshaw's come out before. What was that again? Or who well, so was that remember against? again? Remember last year at the end of the year he had no, them, no, no. I'm talking about this year. I feel like this is the second time Bradshaw's met with the media. Yeah. Oh it, well, Bradshaw met with us in Tampa, like, and, and and yes, someone asked. Okay. The, oh, the, you're the, right. Okay, that, answer that my questions, right. and the question is answer that is yes because Bradshaw answered my question in that press conference down in Tampa. Um, uh, but you yeah, know, Rocky, Rocky came out after a practice, but that was when he was torch didn't want to talk about the coots thing. Mm -hmm. So he sent, Rocky. Oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I thought that was after a game. You're right. That was at Voorhees. That was, in you Voorhees. are correct. Yeah. So like that, I'm just saying there's, there's a thread there. I don't know. I, I don't know if you want an to find ego, an embarrassment. Yeah, I don't know. What? I don't know. And this is the kind of stuff that follows you around for life. <laughs> just, just, just saying. I don't know. Jeez. <sighs> oh, Just like having AIDS. That was that was great. Anyway. Hey, can we get a can follow we get around for hey, I never heard hey. another word about it three days after. <laughs> we talked about that on the Press Row show the other night, and it and it is true, and it might even be worth a little bit repeating here, Bundy. You know, for the guy who uh has turned in into the whipping boy this year because of uh uh, hey, passing well, along the stuff from well, sources, well, and that's gonna follow. That's gonna follow him. It's definitely yeah, it, not the scratching and, and the tearing the A off the guy's sweater last year. That yeah, definitely fucking, isn't something that's stuck with him. No. This will fucking really bring Ant to his knees here. Yeah, like you, like we're gonna get talked to at this point anyway. <laughs> <laughs> at this exactly. point, at this point, it's become a fucking running joke with everybody. I don't know if Torts is in on it, but it's a running joke with everybody yeah did did i tell everybody on the show what happened with uh with me and torts the other day or now no you didn't this is great this is oh, okay. fantastic i, I kind of spoiled part of the punchline i, I, I here, almost but... i almost wanted this to happen after the okay. fact like i almost was like damn i, I wish it would have happened
So I'm leaving Wells Fargo Center the other night. I'm leaving through the lot, and I'm going out by, you know, between the link and, uh, and Wells Fargo Center. And I get held up by security because somebody's coming out from underground, like from the, the tunnel or whatever. And it's an SUV goes by pretty quick. And I'm like, okay, whatever, player leaving. And usually where, where this is at, there are fans who stand outside with like pictures or jerseys or whatever, and they try to get an autograph on their way out, right? So I go to leave. I go to turn onto the street. And this SUV that like kind of went whizzing by flips into reverse. Now, I don't ride the car in front of me, right? So there's a little bit of a gap, but it's not a huge gap, right? Car goes in reverse and starts backing up. I drive stick, so I really quick throw it into reverse, and I start backing up. Now, I'm about to, you know, I'm about to MF this guy, whoever he is, right? And I'm like, what the, like, what is going through this guy's head? Why are you going in reverse? And kind of like goes in and kind of like veers around, and I look, and it's John Tortorella. I shit you not, it's John Tortorella. And then I'm, I'm about to go like, you motherfucker, like, what the, what are you fight? what are you doing? And then I realized, oh, he backed up to like go take pictures or sign autographs or whatever with fans, which is nice. It's totally great. But then I thought about it and I was like, all right, if I hadn't reacted quickly and put my car in reverse and backed up, he would have hit my car. And then we would have had one hell of a fun moment on our hands. That would have been a fun because... wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> It would have legitimately have been like sky low, sky low, low. There, yeah, there, there you go. See, I, now I understand that reference. But like, we had like, if I had known it was torts, I still would have backed up. All right. But if he had hit me, all right. If he had hit my car, we would have had a funny, a funny few things. Silly podcast, bad driver. Although we know torts apparently has a little bit of a history with the with the driving a little bit too quickly. You know, we had somebody send us a little. Little dash cam video. I don't know. I don't know what I'm just saying. But interesting to me that uh, in theory, Torts could have hit me before he would have hit Ant. And that just doesn't seem right. That ain't right. <laughs> oh, yeah. That ain't fair. Oh, yeah. All right, we're done. <laughs> yeah. But I, done. I agree with Allison. We put her comment up. That's that would have been correct. Awesome. No offense to your car, Russ, but that would have been awesome. <laughs> He would have had to. He would have had to come on the show. That would have been part of the. Uh, that would have been it. With uh, would yeah, you would have said. Care. You would have said, "Hey, I don't. I, you don't have to pay for the repairs for the car, but you got to come on the silly." Part. No, he would have. It's like, I know he would have had to pay the repairs for the car. J Toxic Forty Nine says Russ would have been on the horn to Morgan and Morgan. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was a fun little anecdote from the other day. But that was that was a that was a thing that happened. All right, so. Um, let I want to I want to flip this really quick. We talked about the Rangers game. And now as we do look ahead, and I saw that you uh, you sent me over the remaining schedules for these teams. That I was courtesy probably... of our friend Brandon Summerman, who's, I think, watching from, from a distance. But, well, thank uh, you, Brandon Summerman, for putting yeah. this together. I hope that this is accurate. And, Brandon, if it's not, it's your fault, and we're going to hold you accountable, all right? Because <laughs> that's what we do here on, on uh, Snow the Goalie. All right, yeah. so this is the schedule as things uh, are right now. Let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit without cutting off the There you go. There that's you go. good. We can see it. Okay. So... As things currently stand, you can see Flyers are sitting on 82 points with nine to play. Washington, 81 points with 11 to, to play, two games in hand. Detroit over in the Atlantic Division, who went into free fall for a while, 79 points with 10 to play. And the Islanders, 75 points, two games in hand, 11 games left to play. And obviously, notably, the Flyers and Islanders will be playing in the coming days. That's big. The Flyers and Washington and their series or their, their seasons together. That's obviously going to be a big game. As you guys look at the schedule and you mentioned earlier that it's a relatively easy schedule down the stretch, or at least it's an easier one comparatively at Montreal home against Chicago home against the Islanders, big game at Buffalo at Columbus at Montreal at Rangers. Again, that one's rough home against the devils who are pretty much out of it at this point. And then, home against Washington in a game that really could determine the final wild card spot. Yeah. That, I mean, I, that, I, I, that's a, I think, that should be a, a relatively winnable stretch. Well, it should be, it should be enough to get, like I said, if you get nine points, you're going to be in the playoffs. And I think that there are nine points there, maybe even a, uh, a point or two more uh, for them. The one thing I will caution, um, obviously the Islanders are going to come into that game uh, on April 1st and, and say, this is, this is their season, right? They got to win that game. Um, Buffalo has played better of late, 
they're not in the, they're not in the mix here, but they've played better hockey. And the Devils have been sneaky better lately. You know, maybe the low, no pressure on them, and they've played a little bit better hockey. So I think those three games that maybe you looked at initially and said, oh, those should be wins, maybe are uh, still probably wins, but maybe a little bit um, a little bit tougher than you thought. But if you look at – I mean, I really look at Detroit's schedule, and I say that's the one that I worry about more than the Washington Detroit at Carolina, at Florida, at Tampa, Rangers, Buffalo, Washington, and they got a Toronto game in there before closing it out with back to back with Montreal. That's a tough road to hoe for a team that's really struggling right now. And so I, I, I think that's the team that the Flyers need to stay ahead of more so than Washington at this yeah, point. If the, if the Capitals pass you, the Capitals pass you, right? Yeah, it doesn't, I, I agree. it doesn't matter. I agree. I'm, yeah. It's just it's holding your head above Detroit is where I'm looking at it right now too. Ant. Yeah. And if you look at the uh, if you look at um, um, Buffalo plays New Jersey on Friday. It's the only game in the NHL this Friday night. But again, you know, you talk about Detroit. Where are you going to find those points? It was like us with the Flyers. They'll they'll end up getting points in games that you don't think they're going to get points, right? Like, okay, so I'll tell you. Like, I'll give you a great example. Um, I was last night. Montreal beats Colorado last night in Colorado 2-1. The Flyers got to go. Now, the good thing is Montreal will travel home today and they have to play again tomorrow, have to be on the road. But still, they're gonna, they just beat Colorado 2-1. You never thought that was going to happen. So that's what you have to watch out for. You know, games you think you're going to win that are automatics don't become automatics. You're probably going to lose a game here that's going to just piss you right off and say, how the fuck did we lose that? Um but that's just the way it goes. And then you're going to win a game. It's going to surprise you. Like you're going to beat a Boston like they did on Saturday, have a really good win. Um, so again, it's just, it, it, you can't predict the games. You just have to be prepared to play them uh, and not worry. You, and, and I know you're going to scoreboard watch, but I didn't do too much of it. You just worry about taking care of your own business. I think the devils are done. I, I don't think it matters where they, I think they're done. To make no, they're, up. they're done as far as the playoffs are concerned, yes. Bundy. But yeah. but they're but I think that they're playing better hockey in the yes. last few games. I think Maybe now, that, now yeah. that the pressure's off of them, they're not going to make it. I think that they, they they're a little bit more dangerous than maybe they they might have looked, you know, a month ago. Yeah, and the Islanders just they can't make a move. They win a game yeah. and they lose, which is like they're yeah they're 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 too far out of it. But again, I'm just I'm just you know I tell people just be careful what you wish for what you think or what you your expectations because the flyers may get points and i believe anthony's with the nine points but they may not get them in ways that you think it's just it's really really yeah. weird you know you expect like they play montreal and they play chicago right everyone's in their head going well that's four points that's an easy four points it's never easy that's what i'm saying and they have to make sure they take care of their business uh and and do their jobs so, um yeah it's there for the taking you know and well, whatever I think it's personally going to be Carolina and the Flyers in round one, and I'm going to stick still stick with that. Yeah, that's prob that's probably the case, but I I could see Washington, although they have a tough schedule too. I could see Washington getting ahead of the Flyers, and then the Flyers have to play either um, you know whoever wins the division, Florida. either well it's either Florida or Boston or uh, the Rangers. Rangers. So yeah, one of those two. Um, I would take a Flyers Rangers series in the playoffs. Oh my god, it'd be great. Even if. Even great. if it doesn't end up being a very long series, you just think about like, I don't know, the 2010s were pretty much the decade of Flyers Penguins, right? Like, I think that's probably fair. If you set the stage here that Flyers Rangers are on similar timelines, they're they're both on on the up. Imagine the 2020s from now through the end being Flyers Rangers. That for the NHL would be a massive coup. Do you think right, like think getting get... getting those teams in a legitimate rivalry back and forth, multiple playoff matchups over the next few years, it'd be big for the league. Could we could we turn uh, if they played the Rangers? Could we turn that into the snow the goalie garden for the playoffs? <laughs> That'd be fun. That'd, That'd be, be fun good. to go up there. Yeah. Um, right. So the interesting thing is, is is Bundy mentions that the next two games you look at and they're uh, you say, oh well, that's four points. I'm going to be curious to see how they do what they do with goaltending here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think Urson's playing both both those games. I, I think he probably plays tomorrow in in Montreal. I'm not certain he's playing at home Saturday against Chicago. 
with the Islanders game being Monday. And that obviously they're circling the Islanders game is an important one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that Felix Sandstrom has to get you one more start. And it's probably Saturday against Chicago. And so that's why it's not an automatic four points because you probably have to get one more out of him. The Kolosov thing, and I Russ, I hold the pause. Pause. I, I think we need to let's let's have a, a moment about Sandstrom though, because a big well, thing I was, happened. I was going to tie them together, but go ahead. Big thing happened. John Tortorella apologized. He apologized. <laughs> yes, he did. Apologized for the non-answer the other night. Jordan Hall asks a question about. Well, he he mentions that Felix Sandstrom. Um, you know, expressed regret that he didn't play his best game and that he feels like he should have had a couple of, of the, the goals at least, should have had a couple of those back. And uh, Tortorella did not have um, much to say. In fact, he had little to nothing to say at all. In fact, I, it was so easy to find that I'm going to pull it up here really quick because we need to understand why, I guess, an apology came in the first place. Uh, and it was, it was certainly something given his... Uh, his history and propensity for not uh, offering apologies, I, I guess. So let me get this guy pulled up here. It keeps – the Flyers put these th- – here, let's just do it like this. Here we go. I went to go full screen, and it uh, and it crapped out. Here we go. I, I love I love here's, here's towards. the last second tech. Shh. It's great. be nice if you put it up on the screen so people can see it. Okay. There you go. I thought we played really well. Couldn't score. Goalie played really well. The third straight game, it looks like you guys, your third period has been the best. Is that something at least you guys can build off of going into? Yeah, build off the whole game. We played a good hockey game. Here it is. Felix Sandstrom wasn't too happy with his performance. He just felt like he missed a couple there. Did he feel like he could have given you some more subs? And then he left. So there was there was no real answer offered there. The only and thing in- I learned there was that his hand is getting better. <laughs> <laughs> so he offers a non-answer. He stares at Jordan Hall. He walks away. And there's a there's a legitimate question about was that the right thing to do in the moment? Because in a way, you're kind of showing up the the young goalie who Ultimately, you are going to need at least one more start from. And even though he probably was very frustrated with him, even though guys in the locker room might have been frustrated with Felix Sandstrom, even though the fan base was very frustrated with Felix Sandstrom, probably not the best idea, especially because he's a, a young guy who, again, you're going to need to take it to get at least one more start here with a potential playoff spot on the line. Uh, Torts apologized yesterday. And he, I, I believe, apologized to Jordan Hall as well for not giving him an answer, which was also very interesting. I, I have other questions. I wonder, like, it's somebody was like, oh, maybe Ant's going to get his apology now. I don't think so. But, guys, like, were you surprised that he apologized to Sandstrom and that he apologized to Jordan Hall? Surprised? Uh, a little bit. A little bit surprised. You know what, Russ? At this point, I don't really give a fuck one way or another. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, you know, if you would have just said it, I. I I mean, you know what? It's frustrating. It, w- it was a frustrating loss. And for, 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 you know, I'll speak for the coach. He was, the team played well. So you're thinking of the time that this was going to be an opportunity to, you know, maybe maybe get Florida to. Um, I think he felt bad, obviously, you know, just mm-hmm. putting the hands up as a response to what a player said. Um, I don't know. I mean, like, what? It, who gives a fuck? Like, answer the question the first time. Give it the... The answers are not for the reporter. They're for the fans. So the, when the reporter is asking the question, the answer is they are for the fans. You know, I heard last week, I don't know, it might have been after a game one day or I was reading some NHL clips, and it was Patrick Waugh, of all people who, you know, you talk about fire and intensity and passion. That guy's like just top of the food chain, right? And yeah, a goaltender, mind you, that was just unbelievable. But I, I saw, I read something last week where he said, you know, our fans deserve the answers. Like they have to be told what's going on here. They've, they deserve that. And so, you know, I, I again, like I understand where Torts is, and I'm not like, you know, we have fun with it at this point because of what Anthony's gone on. And, and that's why it is kind of funny. And what else I'm supposed to do? Like Flyers said, have fun with it. Okay. 
You ask the wrong guy to have fun with it. That's the problem. And and so, um, <laughs> um, you're right. And knows that too. But but yeah. I'm just saying that it's not it just answer the questions. And you know, and I know Torts is not a guy that puts a player in a bad spot here or would want to. And that was um, a, a very very uh, misjudged moment for for the coach in, in a frustrating time. Um, the apology's fine, but it was it was it was long gone by that time. Yeah, yeah. And I now mean, and now that that kind of transitions us, I guess, and because Sandstrom will be, well, he he might be the guy that will be the backup in the playoffs because there's an adjustment period that's going to come into play here. But it was announced officially by Dino Mominsk that uh, Alexei Kolosov is going to be coming over, that his his tenure with Minsk is done, and that he is on his way to the U.S. It does appear as though that all that visa paperwork that we've been talking about for a couple of weeks, that Jonesy came on the show and Danny Briere came on the show talking about, that yeah, paperwork took a little bit longer maybe than expected, but he's on his way over. He plays on a more NHL-sized rink than some of the other teams in the KHL. One has to assume, and Ann, I saw you wrote about this over on Crossing Broad yesterday, but uh, give people an idea of if this is something that uh, should take a very long time for him to adjust to. The you know, Are we talking about the rink size, which doesn't seem to be? Are we talking about the speed of play, the style of play? What do you think the Flyers are going to be looking for well, when deciding if he's ready to make that jump from the KHL to the AHL and then up to the NHL potentially in a playoff run. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be. I don't think that they're looking at a, a a long look either. I think if he gets here in time for the weekend, he maybe plays a couple games for the Phantoms, and if he looks like he can handle it, then I think they're going to call him up. And I would not be surprised. Like I said, I think in April, I think April they they might get him a game or two. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's the back-to-backs at the beginning of April, <laughs> Buffalo and Columbus, that he gets one of those. Um, and it might be the Columbus game. I mean, I think that, you know, playing the Blue Jackets is like playing in a, another AHL team, right? So um, maybe that's the one that he gets a, makes his first appearance. But, I, you know, there's steps that have to happen. Play a couple games in Lehigh, make sure. <laughs> bless you, Bundy. Make sure that um, that he's not overmatched playing the North American game, and they don't think he will be. That they think that he's going to be, you know, close. Um, they just want to make sure, and then give it a shot, give him a shot, and see what happens. So I think that that's probably where where they're at, what their expected timeline is. Of course, things can change for a variety of reasons, um, including getting getting here. Um, but I think that that's kind of the the thought process because we talked about this very briefly um, on the Press Row Show when I looked at Bundy I said if they miss the playoffs, the two things that they can blame are a bad power play and no backup goalie. And that, you know, they need a backup goalie for a couple more starts. They have nine games left. I don't think Urson's playing eight of them. He's certainly not going to play all nine. I don't think he's playing eight. I think it's seven is a possibility. I would even say six and three is is more likely that you know Urson plays six of these, maybe Sandstrom one and Kolosov two is kind of how I think it's going to go. Um, but uh, they need a backup goalie for for sure because Sam Urson can't play every game. Right. It's going to be interesting, though, like for people who are close to fans, like I, I would assume, I don't know what the Phantoms attendance has been this year. I don't pay attention to it. But one has to think that when Kolosov does get his first start for the Phantoms, that's going to be a big game. Like that's going to probably be a, close to a sellout. There's going to be a lot of intrigue. You know, like there there are going to be a lot of people who are going to make that trip up to the Lehigh Valley because they're they're going to want to see what this guy is. I mean, it's not quite as flashy as, you know, you get a Mafe Mushkov over, right? who, by the way, probably will not uh, jump to the AHL. But, like, I think that there is going to be a lot of intrigue around the guy. And, and Bundy, I actually want to throw this to you as the former player, but you mentioned on Press Row Show either last game or two games ago that it is such an advantage as a team to have a guy that NHL teams don't have film on or experience against at the same level. So, like, can you give people an idea? Like, why is that such an advantage, especially as the playoffs come around? Teams will have seen Arison a bunch of times, but they they will not have played against Kolosov. What what kind of advantage could that give the Flyers? 
Well, I think there's a lot of it's not just like for the team, but it is it, you, you know the team's gonna have a, will react differently to a, a new goaltending situation. I think it was a I was talking to Bill Meltzer the other day, and I think it was a Montreal was it Montreal where you know I don't want to we're not gonna draw comparisons, but did Patrick Waugh come up at eighty seven? And um, I think they somehow they won the cup. Was it one of those years anyway that they Waugh was a rookie goaltender? Nobody really knew the book on him. Um, you can have stuff like that happen, and it's a way that the team responds. But it's also the way the goaltender, I think, sometimes comes in and they don't even know what they're up against. 86, Patrick Watt. Thank you, Donald uh, Bjorty. Uh, and Watt was just a revelation that year. So I think what happens is when you get a guy come in in a situation that doesn't happen very often, I think it's sometimes what that guy doesn't know or doesn't expect that you're like, wow, look at him. He's kind of just playing hockey. Like he doesn't even realize it's the biggest stage going on in hockey in the world. And I think that's sometimes that that's what happens with a guy coming up that shines in a playoff series or no one's heard of him. And I think that's really what, I don't want to say it's going to happen, but that would be the possibility of it happening. And, and again, like he may come here guys and he, it may not work out at all for the rest of the year. We don't know that, you know, I, I don't know. So that only time will tell. Um, and if Anthony is right about uh, Saturday and we see um, uh, Sandstrom again, that'll be um, probably a pretty telling game as well in terms of, of what they're doing. I mean, you're going to play him against Chicago. That's as bad as it gets. That would be the next game to play him if you're going to give Ursan a break. Makes sense. And, and one thing I want to ad- address, and um, I know I've seen this a lot out there, and I don't know – where it's come from with the whole notion that the Flyers have used up all of their post um, trade deadline recalls from the miners. You get four. Um, and there's a lot of people who've been, there's a couple people who said in the comments, I saw it on Twitter, all over the place. The Flyers had recalls, if you, if you guys remember, um, that were emergency recalls right after uh, the trade deadline. And the way it works is, you're allowed to have an emergency recall if there is something that is outside of the team control. So in other words, they didn't create the uh, situation and the need for the recall. So when you had an, when you had injured players and guys like Jinning uh, were being called up, they were being called up on an emergency recall basis. That does not count against your four. Uh, I believe that they, when they recalled, when they scratched Coots and they recalled Jinning and Lixell, those were two recalls that were created by the team. So therefore, those two count. Um, okay. By my count, they shall still have two left uh, that they are allowed to call somebody up without it being injury, suspension, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So those two can still happen. Two moves can still happen. So Kolosov would be one of them uh, as a recall uh, at that point. So, um, yeah, they can they can still do it without an injury or a suspension. That's all good stuff, Ant. Well, well done by you. Yeah. It's uh, like, you know, good information there. How about that? <laughs> That's funny. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it a lot, and I'm like, they, they've not used all four. They had guys come up. I mean, I you know, Jinning and Lixel came up right away, but it was those were considered emergency recalls. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is something that I wanted to bring up here because I think this is really nice and this is about the show. So a big thank you to uh to this. But Glenn Pike over on YouTube says, I literally made a channel just to start chatting with you guys. You'll be hearing a lot more from me and meeting my five year old that thinks Bundy is awesome. Go flyers. <laughs> be like Glenn. All right, be like Glenn. If you're on YouTube, or even if you're not, go over. If you have a Gmail account, you you technically, with a Gmail account, can just like set up a YouTube. Actually, I don't even think you need a Gmail. I think you could use a regular one. You just set up a Google account. And you go over to YouTube, and you can start commenting and having a lot of fun over in the, in the chat. And you know, sometimes we throw yeah. up some polls. We didn't today, but sometimes we do. And I think YouTube is probably the place to be. But I- if you're on Facebook and Twitter, we love you and appreciate you too. You know, I was, I was actually driving the other day, guys. It was just funny. I was just thinking about the show a little bit and um, <clears throat> just how how far and how interesting and different the show has morphed into up on the balcony. Uh, beginning of the year, it was the three of us, you know, kind of pinning, talking hockey about the Flyers. But I'll tell you what, I've never seen it. The show become so, like, amazingly fan-friendly. Like, we have people just jumping on the set now at intermissions. 
Uh, I don't know if he's here, super fan Eric. I'm, I'm actually thinking of putting, uh, you know, making a little a minute with Eric, a moment with Eric, the first intermission, you know, just because only if we get to add a tattoo to his head. We do. We get the. We get the. He can promote that. Just stick it right there. But uh, something like that because we do love having people come on uh, and join us and and uh, very much part of the Snow the Goalie family. So it it has it it started off one way and the show has gone just gone all over the place with like octopus hands and uh, it's been really one of the awesome experiences that I've had to do post playing days. This has been the most fun I've had at any point. It's been really good stuff. So I just wanted to tell you guys that I was just kind of thinking about that. You know the interaction. And I think it's really become, that's really become our identity. And, and I feel the more that the people, our fans are here with us, come up, say hi. We love that. And I just want everybody to know that. That's all. That's really nice, Bundy. Very nice. The other night we, uh, we didn't have intern Andrew who was out with 146 degree fe- uh, fever. And it was, it was really, we don't know if he made it. We haven't heard from him. Um, we, we well, hey, he made a pick last night, didn't he? Allegedly, now we, I, oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't actually hear from him. It was, a, it was a text message, so it could have been somebody who commandeered his phone. Proof of life. Pro- we need a proof of it's life. It's not proof of life. It's not quite like a. Uh, well, okay. Russ, I was thinking that um, uh, the, the flyer. Never mind. We're not doing that. Um, but it was, uh, it was something, and we had the table out there the other day, guys. We had the stickers out there, so people come up to the balcony level. Some people, you know, they walk by and they're like, "The silly podcast." which is funny. We had that guy the other night and uh, there was a guy the other night had me a little bit upset. He said, you guys are one of two podcasts. I listen to flyers podcasts. And I looked at him. I kind of gave him the eye. He goes, the only podcast. And I was like, okay, we're we're good now. I encourage people to listen to other podcasts. I think it's good. And then I wish somebody would start another flyers podcast. We didn't have to be the only one. Then you could compare them. (laughs) Just lay it out there. There's this. And there's this. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Unfortunately, we remain the only Flyers podcast. By it's the like, way, like, like having it's, a filet it's... on one side and a fucking hot dog on the other. You take your pick. Well, there are some in between. You know, there are there are Flyers adjacent podcasts, and they're say adjacent adjacent. See, like, there oh, are other right. there are other shows out there, and every they're I all, think the one they're here, all good here's... and they're all talking hockey, Russ. And you know what? That's what we need. We need people talking, talking puck, and that's what they're doing. I think that the biggest thing is as this team kind of starts to they're, – they're going in the right direction. A playoff run would be really nice. I think that at this point, I'm pretty confident in saying this. The people who like to listen to our show, some will also choose to listen to other shows. Some will not. There are other shows out there that some people hate us, some people like us, some people are indifferent about us. There are people that listen to Mertidis' show who are indifferent or like us or don't like us, like other shows, don't like other shows. I think that ultimately the one thing that we should all be kind of pushing for is as many Flyers fans consume as much Flyers content as possible because that ultimately is the best thing for everybody. But again, we're the only Flyers podcast. I don't know what to do. I don't, I just don't know why somebody hasn't tried this yet. It's so all the burden of responsibility falls on us. It just really is a shame. Um, anything else you guys wanted to get to today? Uh, I saw, by the way, Kolosov the Golosov. That might have to be a shirt. Coley the goalie. <laughs> do we do do we do snow snow the Coley? I don't know. This yeah. guy better not suck. I'm not investing in getting designs, you know, made for this guy until we know he's good. Or maybe so- we should. Maybe we we cash in on it now in the hopes that. You know, if if he if he does suck, that we at least got to make some money to get intern Andrew a better camera to use in the locker room. You know, maybe that's what we do. I don't know. Uh, did you put that up there for? So you wanted me to tell everybody that I, I have did a not meeting? pull that up. I don't know who pulled that up. Was oh, that Bundy? Oh, okay. oh, Bundy did. Okay. Yeah, uh, there. I have a uh, uh, meeting at a call today about that. One of the irons in the fire. Yes, we're working on it. Yes. We have a really good idea for the tailgate. We do. If it if it comes together, it could be really awesome. But we're we're working on it. And it's been we had to get past the carnival. That's why we just couldn't get anything done the first three months. And plus it's cold out. We wanted the weather to change. Mm-hmm. So hopefully Anthony actually I didn't even know it gets back to us with some good news. And 
If not, we'll figure something out. I promise no, I wanna, you. I, I just want to – this because this keeps coming up because people keep bringing this up. I just want to just clarify this. Flyers have used all four post-deadline recalls, March 8th, Adderton, and Brink today, get Jenning and Lixell moving forward. They can only make recalls under emergency situations. Those March 8th moves of Adderton and Brink, okay, those were pre-deadline. They occurred prior to 3 p.m. at the deadline. They do not count as post-deadline moves. They were paper transactions that the Flyers needed to do in order to have things you know, work at the deadline. Um, those did not occur prior to or did not occur after the deadline. So those do not count. Your only two are Jinning and Lixell. So anyway. There you go. I love it. Yep. Love it. Oh, look at this. Joseph Horkowski. I'm watching you guys at 30,000 feet in the air. Russ's forehead just as high or just as shiny at six miles high. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Was there anything else of note over here? We have a lot of people that are. Uh, oh, here we go. Eric H. There are a ton of other Flyers podcasts, but they're all west of the Mississippi. There so, you go. There you go. Good. Point. Um, hey, I had a former student check in here and ask if the Flyers make it into the playoffs. Can I hop on the Press Row Show pregame? Whew. Whew. I like Some that he stories. calls you Joy. And not- yeah. Did you tell him not to call you Mister? Is that what the thing? Is that the thing like with you because you felt like you're oh, too like young. towards towards too the end of my high school teaching mister. days, it was just kind of like whatever. Like when a kid was done being my student, they can they can call me Joy. That's fine. Okay, he was a good kid. Good kid. Yeah. Now not a kid. How about that? Uh, anything else that you guys wanted to get to? Or there are uh, by the way, there are a couple questions here about Sealer and about Drysdale about the fact Se- that they Sealer. They've Sealer been I think you're skating. within. A, I think you're within a week of him getting back. Drysdale skating shouldn't give you exci- much as, as much excitement. I think it's just a matter of keeping his conditioning up. Um, th- that that shoulder injury there, we're going to be very cautious with it. They don't want to. They don't want to get something that can hurt him into this into the off season and in the beginning of next year. So I, I think that you're going to be. You know, there's a chance he comes back, but I think it's they're being very cautious with him. I think Sealer is close, though. I think Sealer, you're within this within a week at this point. How about how about Risto? Anything on Risto? Yeah, I mean he's skating separately. Um, has not been skating with the team. He's been on the ice on his own. That usually tells you you're still a little bit away. What's more likely to happen first? Rasmus Ristolainen takes the ice for the Flyers, or that studio room that we were told was going to happen at Wells Fargo Center gets completed. <laughs> Sean C asks the question. That's just out there. I apparently, I mean, you put this out. You got more details on that than I did. I did. That it, apparently it was something with it had to be done in the off season because of the, it's something that they're working on in the off season because so of the build, just, because of the there was there was the something electricians or something there, like that. There was something. Yeah. There are a couple of things that were passed along, but um, the thought is next year. That's assuming that we're back doing what we're doing oh, with geez, the Flyers. I wonder next if we're going. I wonder if we're going to be back. I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out if they support a silly well, podcast no. or not. We'll have yeah. to we'll have to find out. I guess keep your keep your eyes and ears and out for that one. Ugh. I've been told that there was a downfall of Snow the Goalie like two months ago or a month yeah. and a half ago or whatever. A lot of people they they tweeted some nasty stuff and it's just it's wild, you know, since they said the the uh the end of Snow the Goalie and the end of the press row show and how much the Flyers hate these guys. Jonesy and Briere have been on the show, Hilferty has been back on the show. We're working on a really cool player interview, um, working on potentially a tailgate here with the team. Yep, they hate us. Those people are right. Those people aren't bitter that their uh, attempts to try to cover a team fell apart and no one gave a shit. Those people. We'll see. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. Who knows? Who's to say? Um, all right, I think this is probably good, a good spot to end. But uh, Jay Toxic says Jonesy loves you guys. I talked to him before the game in Nashville in December. Well, how about that? You love that. You love to see that. All right, Aunt, maybe there's a chance. Could there be a chance? Oh, my God, this is good. This is, this is how you end. Wash boy. Risto headed to Ellis <laughs> Island. <laughs> hey, can I fuck it? I, have to, I want to finish up one more thing here. What? Um, who are we playing? We, did we talk about this on the press row show last week? Was it the ESPN broadcast that said oh. that Ryan, Ryan Ellis, Ryan Ellis 
uh, missing the Flyers are missing a key defenseman in Ryan Ellis on the ESPN. Like, do you fucking people even pay attention? Do you do your <laughs> homework at all? Like, how the, the 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 that comment coming out? It tells you everything that you needed to know. I, I think that was the NH- I think it was the NHL Network. What I think it was, I thought it was, I think the, it was no, nah, I think it was EJ Raddick on on uh, NHL Network. Did he not know like Ellis hasn't played in like three years? I know. Holy Jesus! All right. Well, anyway, well, if it's not Bill great. Lindsay, he's a friend of mine. I'll have to give him a call. We'll have to see. Yeah. So, so they say uh, Bill Lindsay and EJ Raddick. Yeah. So, interesting, interesting, interesting. Um. All right. Well, guys, uh, I think that's it for today. A big yep. thank you to everybody who tuned into the show. A big thank you to everybody who joined us live on YouTube and on Facebook and on Twitter. A big thank you to everybody who listens in the podcast feed after the fact. I am compiling reviews. It looks like the last five-star review we got from a new person was in February, so it's time. If you haven't done so already, go over to Apple Podcasts. Leave a five-star rating. That's, that's great. It's helpful. Five-star review, though. That's the thing that we read on the show. If you like us, if you don't like us, you leave a review and we'll read it. All right. You can say some really nasty stuff about Ant that will follow him for the rest of his career. <laughs> and by all means, we will read it on this show. Okay. Mm-hmm. Don't worry. It'll get read. It can be really awful. If it gets through the Apple Podcast filter, we'll still read it God. here on Snow the Goalie, the only that. Flyers podcast. I'm following you for life, man. <laughs> it's a shame. It really is. A, it's a, it's a shame. Uh, the Flyers, just to uh, to recap this, I know we talked about it a little bit ago, but they are in Montreal on Thursday. They are home this weekend on Saturday. They host the Blackhawks. And then on Monday, they host the Islanders. So we've got some big games coming up, guys. I have to be honest with you. I, I thought we had another back-to-back. I thought we had another Saturday-Sunday. And then I remembered hey. it's Easter, and I was like, there's no way they can't do an Easter-Sunday game. And they're not. Can we uh, – uh, just one thing here before we go, and you can just end it really quick. Anthony, uh, big season again for you starts tomorrow, Phillies. Mm-hmm. Um, any predictions? I don't want Homer predictions. I want honest predictions. You know, it's funny. We we uh, did a Phillies podcast uh, crossed up. Uh, Bob and I recorded it two days ago. And it's the sixth year that we've been together. And in the previous six years, we've never – neither one of us have ever picked – uh, the Phillies to win a division, the Phillies to go to a World Series, nothing. This year, I, I cannot believe we both picked the Phillies to go to the World Series and win the World Series. Isn't that unbelievable? Wow. I went I went even further and said that they're going to beat the Braves and win the division. Um, whoa, 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 buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think this is their year. I think this okay. is the Phillies but, year. I have, I have Phillies, Orioles, in the World Series – and uh, Philly's winning it and uh, having a parade down Broad Street in November. And that's not a homer pick because I've not I've been as critical <laughs> of that team for six years on that podcast as, as anybody. And okay. uh, I, I just think that this is the this is their year to finally do it. Let's to leave sh- it at that, Russ. That's all. Does Shohei all Otani to does Shohei Otani play more or or less games for the Dodgers than Ryan Ellis did for? The Flyers. He's almost God, there already. That's a, whole, that's a whole show on its own. What a story that is! It is a fantastic Wild. story. But he's, he's almost he's almost there. So all right. Well, all right. A big thank you again to everybody who tuned in. We will be back later this week, obviously with a press row show on Saturday. If you haven't done so already, come up to the balcony level. You go through the glass doors at section one twenty one. Go all the way up to the balcony, and as you come around the corner, you'll see the organ and you'll see us. Come have fun. Chat some puck. Take a picture with Bundesimo. You can ask for his autograph. He'll certainly give it to you. You can ask intern Andrew for his autograph. He will be very confused and also give that to you. So a lot of fun stuff. We look forward to seeing people on Saturday. Hopefully he rebounds from that 165-degree fever. And uh, big thank you again. And we will talk to all of you later this weekend on Snow the Goalie and the Press Row Show. Have a great day, everybody. Talk soon.